Hello and welcome to today's tech talk around mutation testing. Quick inter introduction of who I am. I'm Thomas Chaplin. I'm a software development engineer in test at Tray.io and um, I'm responsible for all things automation testing and various other areas of automation. So an introduction. Mutation testing is the process of introducing changes to source code and checking that your tests catch those bugs. But what do I mean by this? So what is mutation testing? Mutation testing is essentially tests for your tests because everyone always asks who's testing the tests. That's what this is for. Essentially it introduces bugs for you and then um, runs the tests and tells you whether or not your tests catch those bugs. So as an overview, mutation testing is a tool that will test your tests and implement bugs and then give you a report to say this is where your tests are lacking. But why should we care? Mutation testing gives us metrics. It gives you a report to say um, obviously what percentage what areas of the code and obviously what is and isn't covered from a mutation testing point of view. This then allows us to identify areas in which we can improve our testing. And with that in mind, it saves us time because if we're finding bugs early, we won't find them in production. And if, we've, if we can increase our unit test coverage with better quality tests, then this again is a reason why we should care about implementing mutation testing. So you're probably asking, how does it work? We essentially have our source code. In this case, we have a horse and we're going to introduce uh, a mutation, which is a duck head. And when you combine those two, you end up with a mutant. And an example of what this would be in a real life scenario from a code point of view would be if you had some logic, which was checking if an age was equal to 18, essentially a mutation would be added to your source code where it would convert the equals to not equals. So this is an example of what a mutation could look like. So there's various different types of mutators and one of these is arith arithmetic. Basically what this does is it converts or adds bugs into your source code where it would, for example, convert plus to become a minus. Another example of a mutator is Boolean. So values are switched or conditional operators are um, forced to be true or false. Um, we also have equality, so less than becomes less than equal to. Obviously, if you think about this from a, a unit test point of view, this will then force you to have better test coverage. And as well, assignment. So plus equals becomes less minus equals. These are just um, four uh, available mutators. There are a lot more, and there's also um, type checking, which is obviously a more advanced um, mutation testing uh, mutator. So you're probably wondering what's the difference between coverage and mutation? What is the difference? So the difference between coverage and mutation is that coverage shows you how much code is executed. And it, you can see that in this graphic here. So this particular um, report shows us that all of our um, all of our code has 100% coverage. You can see statement, branch, functions, and lines all have 100% code coverage, which is great. However, if we were to run the mutation testing um, tool on that particular set of code, you can see that we have a very poor result of the report. And this is what I mean by um, coverage shows you how much code is executed. So if you're calling a particular function and you're executing through each line of that code, you'll get 100% um, execution coverage. However, mutation testing tells you how you interact with the code. Instead of just calling the code, it tells you how you interact with the code. 
for example, um, previously we displayed age is equal to 18 and then age is not equal to 18. So as you can imagine, the quality of these tests on the right hand side are very poor. They could just be calling it and saying um, expected uh, one thing to happen. But of course, there are various different iterations that you can run through from a test point of view. So then that brings us on to when should you use mutation testing? This isn't a defined um, argument, but in my eyes, I believe you should aim to have a high volume or higher percentage of uh, coverage, because that way that, that's a very easy score, very easy way to implement unit testing and, and get that coverage that you need. Once you've then achieved a, a decent um, coverage, you can then introduce mutation testing because then this will identify areas in which you can improve your tests. And an example might be um, you're only checking that a value is true, or you're only checking that a value is false. Or if you've got a, a calculator function, you might be executing all of that code, but you're not checking, you're not testing for those um, potential mutations. And this is what this report shows you. So the pros versus the cons. So in my eyes, there's a few pros. Uh, one is the ana analysis. So you can review where your tests are lacking. And it also gives you the ability to uh, come up with a mindset, review the reports and go, ah, yes, that's a different way that I can, I can run a test. And as well, it's cheap. It's quick and easy to set up. And as you can see, I've added an asterisk here because it can get complicated. And wh when it can get complicated, I'm talking about introducing type checking with TypeScript. And um, obviously, depending on how complex your code is, um, it can be quite difficult. So the cons. Mutation testing is slow. This is a given because it's mutating every single line of code. It's looking for areas where it can change your code. For example, it might be looking for every time there's an equal sign and it's replacing that value. In addition, mutation testing can be complex. The reports can be confusing to read depending on obviously how advanced your code is. Once you get your head around this though, I do believe that this is um, the biggest hurdle as far as mutation testing is concerned. And the other con is, it's very underrated. There's very little exposure within the development community. If you look up blog posts, there's very little um, documented around what mutation testing is and how best to use it. So then this brings me on to what mutation testing tools are available. So there's, um, there's a lot more than these three, but these are the three top ones that I could find. And that's to do, um, so you've got Striker, which supports JavaScript and TypeScript. It also supports Scala and C Sharp. And you've got MutMut, which is a Python um, mutation testing library. And then there's Mol for the C um, variants of programming languages. And so that just brings me on to any questions. I hope you enjoyed my presentation today. And if there are any questions, then please leave them in the comments below. And I look forward to hearing any feedback. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. If you um, have any suggestions for more content to, uh, for me to record, let me know. And I will uh, endeavor to um, create that content for you. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed the video.